Hello everyone, it is day 29 of my 30 day SQL query challenge and the problem that we have today is to find the login duration. We have been given an input table which provides the login and log off details of one user. We need to write an SQL query to generate a report that represents the different periods in minutes when the user was logged in. So as you can see, this is the input table that is given. It has two fields. This is the time and this is the status. This status basically tells when the user was logged in and when the user logged off, right? Now what we need to do is based on these two fields, we need to come up with an output that is something like this. So we need to say when the user logged on and when did he log off and he might have done it multiple times. You can see that this is basically one instance when the user logged in at 10 a.m. and then he logged off at 10, 3 a.m. So basically for that, you, you can say that the duration is three minutes when the user was logged on, right? And then you can see there's another instance when the user was logged on, that is he logged in at 10, 4 a.m. and then logged off at 10, 6 a.m. So that is what is mentioned here and the duration is two minutes, right? Same way, there are other two instances as you can see here and then there is another instance that is here. I hope the problem statement is clear. Now you will be able to download all of these materials from my blog as well as from my discord and you can then try to solve it on your own. Now I'll be solving it using the PostgreSQL database and as you can see I have already created the table here. Now before I can solve this, first of all let us come up with the logic on how to solve this, right? Now if I look carefully each instance where the user was logged in, I can see that the login time is this one and the log off time should be when basically when the status becomes off, right? So I need to consider this record. Now, if I only had to consider these records where the status is on, I can easily do that using one of the logics using row number, which I have used in my previous queries. So I could just put these three records in let's say in one partition or in one group or one window, then these two records in another partition, then these four records in another partition and this one in the another partition, right? I can easily do that using the uh, row number concept, which I'm going to show you now, okay? But what I also need to do is just considering these three record within a partition is not going to solve my problem because the log of time is the next record after the partition right? So I need to build a logic to consider this as well. But this part we will see later. First of all, let us come up with a logic where I could kind of create a partition for each of these log on times, okay? And that I can easily do using the row number function. So what I'll do is first and foremost, I'll just create a row number here. So I'll just say row number and I'll say over and I'll say over order by times as RL, okay? And if I just run this, you can see that I have the different row numbers for all the 18 records in this table, okay? Now, what I want to do is, I want to consider these three records as one partition, then these two as one partition, and so on and so forth, right? Now, for that, what I can do is, I can basically create another row number. I want to create another no row number, and then I want to not consider wherever the log off happened. Okay, now if it is confusing, let me show you in the query. Hopefully then you will better understand this. So I'm just going to say select from and I'll move this above here. Okay, and I'll just move this here. And okay, and I'll give an alias for this like X. And here I'll just tell star. And if I run it, I'm still getting the same output. But what I want to do now is I want to filter where the status is equal to on, right? Because I'm only interested where the status is on. So I'll only consider those record. Wherever it is off, I'll not consider it. Okay, so if I just run this, now what happens is I'm getting just 10 records. Previously, there were 18 records. And now you can see that the first three record, the row number is one, two, three, but then the next row number is missed because the row number four is when there was the status as off. So that one is not included here. But the next row number I have five, six. And after six, again, seven, eight, nine, those three records are missed. And then there is 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Now I'm doing this on purpose because once I have this data, then I can create another row number here, which I'm going to do. Okay. And I'll just create it here and I'll call it like row number two. What happens is now I have a new row number for the filtered data. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to subtract this row number with this row number two field 
such that if you look carefully, 1 minus 1 will be 0, 2 minus 2 will be 0, 3 minus 3 will be 0, and then 5 minus 4 will be 1. That means for the first three record, I will get the same value, that is 0, right? So that could be probably my first partition, right? And you see that the time is exactly what I want. And then you see the next two record, 5 minus 4 is 1, 6 minus 5 is 1. So these two will again become another partition, okay? Because its value will be 1, okay? And then if I consider the next four record, here when I do 10 minus 6 is 4, 11 minus 7 is 4, 12 minus 8 is 4, 13 minus 9 is 4. So these four records, Okay, okay, so I think these four records will all have the same value, that is 4. So, so basically the first three records will have one value, the next two will have another value, the next four will have a same value and so on. Based on that, I can partition it in the next step, right? Now, just to show you how that looks, what I'll do is, I'll just put a comma here and I'll just copy this. I want to subtract this field with this field, right? So, I'll say Rn minus this and this one I'm just going to call it like GRP group. Okay. Now, if I run it, you can see that I have created a group here. Okay. So, for the first three records, the group value is 0. So, that means this can be now treated inside one partition in my next step when I'm using a window function. Then I can consider the next two record as one partition, the next four as another partition and the last one as a separate partition. Right. So, this is why I used this row number concept. I initially created a row number for all the records, then I put a filter so that I only fetch the records that I need, then I again put another row number and then I subtracted the two row numbers to kind of create the unique group, okay? So I hope you understand what I'm doing here. Now what I want to do is, within each of these partitions, wherever the group is same for whatever the records, right? So this I'm going to consider like one partition and within that partition I'm going to fetch the first value from times and the last value from the times field. Okay, using the window function so that I will get the log on time and the log off time. Okay, it will not be the exact log off time, but we will fix that in the next step. Okay, but first of all, let me use the first value and the last value to get the basically the time when the user logged in and the last login time of that user. Okay, so what I'll do is first and foremost, I don't need this field here. So I'll just remove that and I'll run it. Now I have the row number and I have these groups. That is what I want. And the next thing is I'll again put this into a subquery. So I'm just going to say select from and I'll move this to the right and here. And this one I'll just call it like Y. Okay, some I'm just giving some alias, alias to the subquery. And let's say I'll just do a star here. Okay, I'm still getting the same data. Now what I want is I want to create the first value and the last value. So within this partition, I want to fetch the first value that is my login time and the last value will be the last login time for that user. So I'll just tell first value and I want to fetch the field times. I'll say over. I want to do the partition by the GRP field that is this field, right? And then I want to order by the GRP comma the times field. And this whole thing, I'm just going to call it like, let's say log on time, okay? And I'll just copy the whole thing and I'll put it again here to fetch the last value. This first value will fetch within each group. It's going to fetch the first time, that is the log on time. And the last time also I want, that will basically be the last login time, right? And that I can fetch using the last value window function. So I'll say last value, then everything stays the same. But if you remember, whenever I'm using last value, I need to provide the frame clause so that it fetches the correct last value, right? So I'm just going to say range between unbounded preceding and un unbounded following. And this is going to be my, let's say last logon, okay? Now if I just run this, you can see that I have just created these two new columns. And if you just consider the data for each partition, wherever the group is same, right? For this first group, the login time is 10 o'clock and the log off time or basically the last log on time is 10, 10 o'clock, 10, 2, right? 10, 10 a.m. and 2 minutes. Now this is fine. And when I come to the second group, you can see that the login time is 10, 4 and the log out or the last login is 10, 5. Now this is fine. But I'm only interested in logon and the last login because once I have the last login, then I can join this with the original table such that after the last login, whatever record comes, if I take its time, I will get the log off time, right? I hope you understand. 
So what I'll do is I don't need all of these fields. So I'm just going to say a distinct, I only need these two fields. And you see here, these fields are kind of repeated, right? Within the group, these two values are the same. So if I use distinct, it is only going to give me one record for each of these groups. So there should be probably four uh, records. So first of all, let me not use the distinct so that you can see the data. You can see that I'm having all of this. Now, if I use the distinct, it will fetch me the login and the last login for each user within each of the group or within each instance when the user had logged in. Okay, so this is fine. Now, this is basically the data that I wanted. I want to join this data with the login details table based on the last login. Okay, so based on the last login, if I join it and then after the last login, if you look at here, after the last login, if I take the next record, this is basically going to be the log off time, right, as shown here. Okay, and that is why I'm building a logic like this. So now what I'll do is I'll just move this here. I'll say with CTE as, and I'll just move this to the right. And here I'm just going to do like this. And I'll just tell select star from CT. Okay, so I'm still getting the same data. Now what I want to do is I want to join the login details table. Okay, sorry, the login details table yell with the CT. Okay, now the important thing to note here is how do I join it? I want to join it using the CT last login date. That is this one is equal to yell dot times right now basically I'm joining this column okay this value here so 10 to for example will join with this whole table here and it will join with this particular record okay now the problem is if I do just an inner join because here I only have four records or only four last logins and this input table here I have 18 records only four of them will get matched right so for example if I just run it you can see that I'm only getting four records but that is not what I want I want the I I basically want all the other records, right? So what I'll do is I'll just use a left join here. So now if I run it, you can see that I am getting, these are all the data that I'm getting from my login details or the main input table. And these are the data that I'm getting from this whole logic that I have built, right? Now, if you look carefully under each of the instance in the last record, I have the logon time and the last logon time, right? Now, what I want next is I want to create another column here, which is going to fetch me the time, the next time after the last logon time. So after the last logon time, whatever the time is present in this column, if I fetch it, that is basically going to be the log of time of that user, right? And that is what I want to do. Now that I can do easily by using the lead window function. So here I can just tell lead and I want to fetch the times field. I'll say over. And now I don't want to do any partition. I'll just uh, do an order. So I'll say order by times. And I think that's all. And this is going to be my log of time, right? So if I run it, now you can see that I have a new column here. And if you look carefully, the log of time, what you see here is basically the next record time that is after this last login. So for 10.2, I am getting 10.3 here. For 10.5, the next record is 10.6 and that is what I'm getting here. So for 10.12, the next record is 10.13 and that is what I'm getting here. And finally for 10.15, the next record is 10.16 and that is what I'm getting here, right? Now I can easily take this as my log on time and this as my log off time. And that is exactly what I will do now. So I'll just tell log on and then this whole thing is my log off. If I run it, I'm getting the data that I need. But there are these additional records which I don't need. Right now, I cannot filter that. I cannot just put a filter here saying that where logon is not null because if you do that, this log of time is going to get changed. Okay, because you are applying the lead function based on this whole data. Okay, if you want, you can try it. So, what I'll do is I'll just put this into another CTE. I'll just move this here and I'll just tell CTE final as and I'll just put this into the parentheses. And here I'll just tell select star from CTE underscore final. Okay. And I'll just move this little down. And if I run it now and I'm getting an error because I need to put from, and now you can see that I'm still getting 18 records, but here I can put a filter saying that where log on is not null. If I run it, 
you can see that I'm getting the four records that I actually need, right? So 10 to 10, 3, 10, 4 to 10, 6, 10, 9 to 10, 13, and 10, 15 to 10, 16. That is exactly what I have here, right? Now, the last thing is I want to find the duration, right? Now, in order to find the duration, what I can do is I'll just move this little down. And here I can just tell, basically, I need to subtract. I need to subtract log of minus, let's say if I do log on, this should give me the duration as duration. If I run it, you can see that I'm getting the duration, but it is not in minutes. So in order to extract the minute from this time interval, I can just tell the function extract. I'll just tell minute from this whole value, right? And I think that's all. Now you can see that I'm getting the duration in minutes. Okay. So this is basically the solution to this particular problem. I hope you understood this particular problem and I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you like this problem. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you tomorrow with the last video in this video series. Bye.